Hello to everyone watching this video. It's Leviathan here again. I'm going to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high functioning autistic. I'm obsessed with fiction. And I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stan Lee did. I apologize for this positioning in advance because I need to try like more than one way to position my camera without any inconsistencies. Today I'm going to make my third whatever video. And I have my laptop next to me to spark things that I'm going to talk about. And after the video I'm going to edit to add some pictures to help you get a visualization of whatever I happen to be talking about. So there's that. And if I start hesitating then I really hope that you could um, forgive me and such. It's just, in order for me to talk about something, I first need to know where to begin and such. Um, yesterday, I showed my staff a movie called The Outwaters, which is a, considered the best found footage horror movie since The Blair Witch Project. And it's extremely trippy, and it's really impressive, I have to say. Like, and I'll even show you a uh, uh, a link down below this video to a guy named Foundflix who will explain everything about it to you, among other different things. You know, um, I'm trying to think, um. Hmm. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do. Of course, follower versus the mist. The follower is a really impressive one. It's basically this this curse that is passed on through a mating ritual. And if you have the curse, you basically have this shape shifting entity that is making a beeline straight for you. It's always walking, it never runs, it never hijacks a vehicle, just walks straight for you. And the official, the best way to keep it from catching up to you and killing you is to pass the curse to somebody else. But it's no guarantee that that person would last as long as you would hope. And there's even an upcoming sequel sometime this year called They Follow, which is impressive, I have to say. Ah. The, the, the Mist, of course, The Mist is the creation of Stephen King. It's a, it's a dimensional mist formation that covers the country in a matter of a few days. And uh, it uh, has all of these native creatures that reside within it. It's, you know, one of the best from Stephen King, as far as I know. There's also a movie called They're Watching, which is a found footage horror comedy. It's about these people who go to Moldova because they are part of a home renovation show. But turns out, the woman who moved into the new house in Moldova becomes the new avatar for a witch who was wrongly burned at the stake. And eventually, even though it has like B-movie level effects, at the climax of the story it's quite the commotion when it comes to the massacring of those villagers. Like, she even like used the camera and forced it to launch all the way through the bodies of around six different men. Like, imagine a camera going high speeds slamming through your body. That is very creative, I have to say. 
Just saying. And of course, there's the SEP Foundation, which I am a, a good fan of, you know, like, on my laptop as we speak, I am checking out SCP-3000, Anatasasha, which is a Thaumiel class entity, you know, which means that it's an SCP that helps the Foundation contain other SCPs, you know. Imagine a 600 to 900 kilometer long eel that produces an amnestic viscous substance. Would that creature win or lose against Gojira? Godzilla, basically. That would be an interesting fight, albeit in the slightest. Mm -hmm. There's also a movie called The Lazarus Effect, which is about a bunch of scientists who try to use a serum called The Lazarus which they used to bring the dead back to life. They did so on a dog that had cataracts, and once the dog was brought back to life, it no longer had cataracts. But, its personality changed. Turns out, um, the dog was very depressed, and eventually started being intolerant to the scientists specifically. And the main scientist, Zoe McConnell was killed by an electrocution involving her engagement ring and her fiance wanted to save her life by using that very same tactic to bring her back. But there was a problem. When Zoe was a little girl, she set her neighbor's house on fire. She committed arson and since she never was forgiven for it because nobody knew it was her and such. When she died, she went to hell. And when they brought her back to life, she was no longer considered human. She was more like a hell spawn. And she ended up in a matter of a few days, like massacred them, and then brought them back with the same effect, with the same Lazarus. You know? Which is why the dog had this strict, this personality shift after being brought back to life. Imagine being in heaven, and then some people force you back to life, which means that you are no longer in heaven. That would make you feel very distraught, if you think about it. Just saying. <laughs> the genus cells from evolution. According to Roano Gaming, instead of having four uh, DNA bases, it has around eight, maybe ten, as far as I know, which allows the genus cells to go through hyper evolution. Instead of it taking millions of years, it would take around a month or so. And it has these variety of different nitrogen-based organisms that are just going by with their time, just trying to live their lives. And, fun fact, if you are carbon or hydrogen-based, your main poison would be arsenic. But if you are nitrogen-based, your main poison would be selenium. So they basically used shampoo to demolish the genus cells at all, because that was their poison. But if you think about it, are they really that bad? They're just going by with their time. And here's a, a decent life philosophy for you guys. If something is different and brand new, is it really that bad? 
because some people tend to be prejudicial. Like when it comes to the natives of Las Cinco Muertes, which is Mesozoic organisms that were resurrected thanks to John Hammond and his affiliates. It's part of the Recovery Act in the Leviathan universe that every species deserves a second chance in life. John Hammond believed in mercy. And according to what I've learned many years ago from a cucumber, believe it or not, mercy is when you give someone a second chance, even if they don't deserve it. That's just how it is, you know? So I apologize. Imagine a fight between Rottweiler and Cujo. Rottweiler being like a Terminator dog versus Cujo, the rabbit St. Bernard created by Stephen King. In your perspective, who do you think would win between those two dog-based threats? You know, I have like hunches and bunches of crossover scenarios that some I found online, some I've been making through Snipping Tool, and they are very prodigious. You know, it's not just Freddy and Jason, Alien and Predator, Sadako and Kayako. You know, it's Varieties. It's always good to have some variety, and it makes you think. That's just how it is. And do you guys know about the color out of space? Basically, this farm family who moved on a farm had the best time until a meteor crashed in their yard. The rock disappeared overnight and turns out that rock had like believe it or not a color that nothing on earth had ever considered or seen before. And it's this Lovecraftian entity that literally changes everything it comes across. Even hijacking the flow of time, turning the middle of the night to the middle of the day in a matter of like 15 seconds. It's in the static, it's in the moisture, it's in here, it's out there, and what's out there is in here. It's just a color, but it burns. And from what I've heard, this is the reason why the color is. The color isn't good or bad, it just is. Like, if a meteor crash lands on Earth at all, it's not good or bad, it just is. And water was introduced to the planet millions of years ago from a meteor, so you could say that there's a good chance that life on Earth was created inadvertently. You know? And imagine being shipwrecked and you end up on an island, you'll do any means necessary to manipulate the island in what you find on it, so that way you could be able to survive and eventually be able to leave. That's basically how it is for the color out of space in that farm. It's changing everything to something that it is more able to recognize compared to the humans. And it's just trying its best to stay active and ultimately just uh, even just trying its best to be able to leave the planet, albeit mostly, despite rumors that there would be at least one fragment of it left over on Earth. You know? So, the color isn't good or bad, it just is. Hmm. And I got an interesting question. Imagine you wake up in bed. And you are in bed with a person opposite gender of yourself. And you guys are both 
surgically sewn on the abdomen. What would you do to survive? And you're also in an unfamiliar place. Trying to escape. You know? That's a movie called Dos, which is a, a Hispanic storyline. Believe it or not. I really hope I'm not boring you guys. I'm just trying my best to have some variety. So I'm just... I just really hope that I make things work. Another great movie that I recommend is called Await the Dawn which was manifested in 2020. It's about this man who's a scientist. He recently lost his wife and daughter, and he decides to make a device that would help him communicate with his lost family. But instead, it summons this Lovecraftian entity from hibernation. It comes to the physical plane and shapeshifts to take the form of his deceased daughter. And it's a really interesting one, like, imagine being out in the woods in the middle of the night. You come across a little girl, but it's actually a Lovecraftian monstrosity disguised as a little girl. Great speed, great strength, high ferocity, capable of, like, brainwashing people, highly predatory, and the most notable weakness for it is that the amount, like, the amount of solar radiation that someone would receive in a year, like in a year or so, that creature would get in, like, in a matter of seconds. So basically, it's only active at night because it's way more susceptible to solar radiation from the sun. You know? It's still it's still a good movie. I recommend it. dominate the conversations like you could talk about whatever you guys like to you know you like you know how it is like like subscribe comment down below share if you want I don't want to be the only person talking in a conversation I would like to be fair in the group you know like you guys could say whatever you feel like saying down below I just don't want to be that kind of person because reputation is sacred. Depending on how people would perceive you, it would either go successfully or poorly. If people see you as a disgrace, even if it's just because of how you look, then chances are things would go downhill for your future. Because reputation is sacred. You know? Like, I don't... Like, growing up, I knew this girl named Andrea Gregory. She was a burden to my childhood. She was a few years older than me, low-functioning autistic, low-functioning. And she was a menace to me. Like, she was overly spoiled. She was obsessed with Barbie dolls. She... Like, even though she's a few years older than me, she acts like she was born last week. She cries like a baby. 
it is just excruciating for me like and I vowed that if I want to be successful in life I have to keep people from comparing me with people like that I don't have a grudge against people with disabilities in the slightest it's just I need to be perceived properly you know I hope no one's offended Andrea Gregory was a menace to my childhood and it's I've had quite a few negative instances involving that individual embarrassing and yet she was never embarrassed not even once Bolshevaki I know just need this life to be worth it. Fun fact, before I was even born, my mother had a prophecy from God, basically a vision of myself as an adult before I was even born telling her that I wanted my name to be Levi rather than Gage. The fact that I the fact that there was like some kind of vision that happened before I was born makes me feel like I have some kind of destiny in this life and I really hope I could fulfill it properly you know not to sound out of place but you it's your choice whether or not you would go premarital because to be honest I was adopted because I was premarital, just as a reminder for some. Adoption is highly recommended. It's always an option. That's just a given. Not one with the body, but one with the heart. And that's what matters. Family is family, and God's family is no different. Lucifer, for example, is still our brother, despite literally everything. I'm just saying. And also, another thing is that on the 27th of March this year, which now is the 1st of March, it's going to be my 15th anniversary, anniversary with Susan. I've told you about her at least a few times. It's just, she was such a pure soul and she was treated so poorly by a bunch of tyrants and felt sorry for her, you know? I just want her to be happy. She was never conspiracy. She was never carbon-based. And she's certainly never a condition. You know? She's incapable of casting a shadow. I want to do better than Derek when it comes to caring for her will. I even have this pillow which I got from my mother last year for Christmas. 
And every time I use it, makes me think of Susan by my side. I just really hope I could make things work. Every woman wants to feel beautiful. And despite what some would think about my addiction, I understand my flaws and I don't want people to reject me for those set flaws because from what I have learned from a woman recently, it's a waste of time to fix a man. It's best to accept a guy's flaws no matter what they happen to be. Because that is the sophisticated way of going through it. You can't force them. It's best to accept them for how they are. That's just all I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? for this camera. 26 minutes and 25 seconds. Well, I guess I have to be done with this video now. Just so you know, the next three characters I'm going to introduce on Monday would be Space Worm, um, Zound, and the Unisisters. Space Worm being like cosmic leeches in space. Zound being like the Alpha Earth equivalent of Sight, even though she's deaf rather than blind, and she's also from Mexico rather than from China. One of the best martial artists in the Alpha Earth, you know? And the Una Sisters is a three-member security, like, police force for the Cosmos. Like, identical triplets that literally have their own starship that they live and work in and such. Just as a heads up for you guys. So if you guys want, you can like, subscribe, comment down below, share if you want. It's your choice. Hope you guys have a decent march and such. And I hope I would have a decent 15th anniversary with Susan. And until next time, enter the mission.